what we're going to look at here is a particular type of strategy called a reactive strategy. Now, a reactive strategy only reacts. So it doesn't keep in mind what it did in the previous round. It just does whatever. It just takes its decisions based on what the opponent does. So it's it for Tatna's example of reactive strategy. It just responds to whatever the opponent did last turn. But a more generic form of writing down a reactive strategy is to just say, well, let's call it a vector of two probabilities. The probability of cooperating if my opponent cooperated and the in the previous move, and the probability of me cooperating if my opponent defected in the previous move. So for example, tit for tat would be um, written as one and zero. If my opponent cooperated, I definitely cooperate. If my opponent defected, well, I definitely don't cooperate. I defect, okay? What becomes interesting is when we start looking at uh, if we have one reactive player playing against another reactive player. Okay, because if we have that, we can actually study this as what's called a Markov chain. So the idea is we know the game is going to be in one of four states at any given point in time. We're either going to be both players cooperating the first player cooperating and the second player defecting, the opposite of that, or both of them having defected. And we can draw the transitions between these states. So if we're in the state QCC, right, then we're going to go to the state CD with a particular probability. So first of all, we need the first player to cooperate, given that they have cooperated. So that's going to happen with probability P1. Then we need the second player to defect, given that um, the opponent... Oh, I should have written this the other way around. So we need the first player to cooperate, given that the opponent cooperated, and that's um, P1. And then we need the second player to defect, given that their opponent cooperated, and that's just... 1 minus q1. Okay? And so we can go through and we can draw the entire diagram. So for example, the probability of going from cc to cc will be p1 times q1. The probability of going from cc to dd will be 1 minus p1 times 1 minus q1. Okay? And so we can write all those down. Now, I'm skipping some of the, the steps, but we can actually encapsulate all of that in a matrix. And this is how we normally study Markov chains. And so this, this matrix we'll write down as M, and it's simply the movements between all the states. So uh, this is, if we were in CC, we were in CD, we were in um, DC, oh, that should be a, a DC, and then we were in DD, and then the probability would go to CC, CD, DC, and DD. And now we can write down um, our, our probabilities of being of going from one, one state to the next. And this is me just basically taking this diagram and putting it into a slightly nicer form. So this is going to be P1, Q1. This is going to be P2, Q1, P1. Q2 and P2, Q2, right? They're all the probabilities of cooperating given what the opponent did. So that's, so, so this, for example, here, P2, Q2 here, is what are the chances of us going that way? And then we have P1 times 1 minus Q1. We have P2 times 1 minus Q1 and then P1 times 1 minus Q2, P2 times 1 minus Q2. And now we're going to have the essentially the opposite of that, 1 minus P1 times uh, Q1, 1 minus P2 times Q1, 1 minus P1 times Q1, 1 minus p2 times q2. And then very finally, we've got 1 minus p1 times 
1 minus q1, 1 minus p2 times 1 minus q1, 1 minus p1 times 1 minus q2, and 1 minus q2 times 1 minus q2. Okay, and so this is the probability with which we uh, defect, both defect given that we both defect. And so we have that matrix. Uh, looks terribly messy right now, but hopefully um, you get the idea. And what that means is that if we have a particular state of our game, and a particular state of our game can just be represented by a vector pi. So for example, if we were in position CD, that vector pi would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And then if I take pi and I multiply it by m, I'll get another vector. And this will be a vector of uh, not just zeros and ones, but a normalized vector of um, probabilities. And this, this will be essentially the probability of which I go from this state, this state to all the other states. Okay? And so we can, and this is what we'll see, we can see at what point is pi m equal pi. And that becomes interesting because that's us saying that over time we have stabilized, we've arrived at a stable, what's called steady state, and so the probabilities here no longer change. And so as we as we change, um, as we play the game, we have a, the, the probability of being in a given state doesn't change. And then once we know the long range average time we spend in each one of these states, we can simply multiply that by the utilities of these states and find out how well the strategies are going to do. And that's what we're going to do in the next section.